another missile launch towards the Pacific, possibly an ICBM. Senior defense officials say that Pyongyang may uh, conduct the test to show it's capable of hitting the U.S. with a nuclear strike. The country's defense minister also informed lawmakers he is forming a military unit whose mission is to exclusively target North Korea's leadership. Uh, the minister then reportedly said that it's worth reviewing the redeployment of American tactical nuclear weapons to the Korean Peninsula. South Korea has uh, also announced preparations are complete for the full operation of the THAAD missile defense system. It was deployed in South Korea by the U.S. President Moon Jae-in was initially cautious about its deployment. Right, Beverly, it's been said a million times, everyone says it, because it's true, which is that there are no good options whatsoever. Do you like the way that this is being handled now, or do you wish it was being handled differently? I think there are things that do work well and things that don't. I will say it's, we can come together as in a country and say there really are no good options, as you already said on the show. But I would say in some of President Trump's tweets today, I was a little concerned that he seemed to bash South Korea a bit, saying that their process of appeasement hasn't worked. I was glad to see later in the day that he did meet with them, with some other leaders there, because we need our allies to be very close. He also had another tweet saying that maybe we should stop trade with, with China. That would have huge economic implications if we did that. So I would say in some ways the fact that he's tried diplomacy, um, try to keep us out of any type of war is a good thing. But I think he needs to be careful about some of his tweets and what he thinks are solutions. Following Pyongyang's most powerful nuclear test to date, the United States used an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council to send out a stern message. Enough is enough. It's also calling for the strongest possible sanctions to be slapped on Pyongyang, and it wants the council to vote next Monday. Well, the American ambassador said North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's use of missiles and nuclear threats shows he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. But our country's patience is not unlimited. Japan's UN ambassador said countries should put more pressure on the North before its actions bring about serious consequences. Japan stresses the need for the Council to adopt swiftly a new resolution with further robust sanction measures. Diplomatic sources say the Council members will discuss banning North Koreans from working abroad and cutting off oil shipments to the country. China and Russia remain cautious over additional sanctions. I'm not sure that, uh, that they will, they will uh, influence uh, uh, the other side uh, to abandon what they have been doing. Uh, and this, this is not the, not the way to get uh, parties at the table, at the table which, and, and to, to seek for a political solution, which we are all in favor of. Moscow and Beijing are also reportedly proposing a so-called freeze-for-freeze option, where the North halts nuclear and missile testing in return for the suspension of U.S. and South Korea military exercises. Nikki Haley reportedly called the proposal insulting. On Sunday, North Korea tested what it claimed to be a hydrogen bomb that could fit on a long-range missile. A note penned by former U.S. President Barack Obama to his successor Donald Trump refers to the importance of upholding democratic values. U.S. network CNN, which has obtained a full copy of the letter, suggests Trump has not followed his predecessor's handwritten advice. It's a White House tradition for outgoing leaders to leave some words of wisdom for the incoming president. Obama left his letter in a drawer at the Oval Office in January. He wrote that the role of president is unique, without a clear blueprint for success, adding, he did not know whether his advice, his advice will be particularly helpful. But he described American leadership in the world as indispensable. Obama urged Trump, through action and example, to sustain the international order that's expanded steadily since the end of the Cold War. He also reminded the newly elected leader, we are just temporary occupants of this office. Obama wrote that it was a role of the president to serve as a guardian of democratic institutions and traditions. Well, to communicate with others. And I think that China knows that. We probably wouldn't actually ever do anything like that. The problem is China hasn't held up on their end of the bar bargain. President Trump believed in good faith that they would come to the table and that they would apply pressure to the North Koreans. That has not worked out, at least so far. And with North Korea, we either neutralize them or they're going to neutralize us in our ability to respond to their development of this nuclear weapons program. And with all due respect, I, I don't think that they're going to do it. And so the time is of the essence because once they have the ability to deliver a nuclear warhead to Manhattan or Los Angeles via an ICBM, 
And it's just a question of miniaturizing a nuclear warhead to be able to deliver it here. They're already working on that technology, and they're far ahead of schedule compared to where our intelligence community thought they were. Once they have that, they have neutralized our ability to respond to them. They are then at more, they're closer to parity than they are today. And that's a real concern. And so this is a ticking time bomb, literally. And the time for appeasement is over. And in South Korea, they ran, they had a recent election. You would think that North Korea would be the top issue on the ballot. It was number three. It was number three. And the South Koreans, their president wanted to go and co-host the Winter Olympics with North Korea. I mean, they're not, they, they, I don't, they're not an equal partner here. They don't want to help pay for their defense. So the president has to take control of the situation because the South Koreans aren't. I, I, I do think that the Chinese are okay with the, there's sort of this appeasement type of philosophy to be able to say, sure. it's okay if North Korea gets this type of weapon. Mm -hmm. But what they are afraid of, what the Chinese are worried about, is actually North Koreans fleeing North Korea and going into China. Absolutely. They're much more worried about the migration of those people moving into mm -hmm. there. But uh, again, uh, we need to engage the Chinese, but we have to be ready for a military strike and, and may have to be proactive. And they're worried about other things too. Uh, In addition to just the refugee problem, yeah. they don't want Japan to have this huge military force or South Korea yeah to ramp up and just create all that conflict in that area. They don't I, want that. I understand that, but I'm, I'm with Harlan on this. I think there's so much of what they shouldn't want had and what you know they should be considering. And then there's what they're just absolutely not doing. And they're not showing any kind of good faith effort. And for many, many, many years, we've been saying the answer to this lies with China. And if, Ch if China steps up, if China plays their part, if China, and it, China's not doing any of that. So the most provocative tweet uh, that I saw today, I'll go with you, Beverly, when the president says he is considering stopping all trade with any country, not just doing business, Congressman, enabling, enabling North Korea to the highest level. I think that has to be a viable threat, uh, no matter how expensive it makes our iPhones or anything else, because I don't see China moving with any other option other I mean, than that type of severe economic pressure. No, I, I think it's definitely concerning. We do need to look at all options. I do think China is the key. But when you make a statement like that without knowing what some of the implications could be, I think you have to be careful. I mean, stopping trade with a country where we do a lot of trade with them, that impacts a lot of business. Oh, I, so, think, I think we have to be very serious. We don't sure. put empty threats out. I guess what I'm saying, maybe it's provocative. I don't know. Y'all tell provocative. me. provocative. But, but, but I, I also think it's provocative that we are possibly within weeks of yep. North Korea being nuclear in a way that we never imagined before. Ebony, the, the dichotomy that we have here is either we we threaten to suspend trade with China and our iPhones cost more, or we have more a than nuclear just iPhones or would, whatever. They put yeah, okay. it we, we, our we, economy would we, tank we in suspend, a lot of areas. We, either we suspend trade or we have a radical dictator that is totally unhinged that has the capability to deliver a nuclear warhead to the continental United States. So either we go through some short-term pain re readjusting our economy and bringing back uh, manufacturing here, or we run up against a tyrannical dictator that will, will, ha will have a, a gotcha card over us that we will never be able to eliminate. Containment doesn't work, as we've seen with Pakistan. Uh, again, it's not so simple to just stop all trade with China. No. It's well, really it's are, simple, though. But look, no, it's, it's, it's certainly nuclear not. War it's or yeah. trade. not. But look at look, look, it's not nuclear war or trade not. because we don't really know. I don't. There's a that lot of experts just... who think that if <laughs> we don't do anything to him first, he won't do anything to us because him doing anything to us, he knows is basically like saying, "Hey, I'd like to be blown up now, and my whole but entire look, country look, to be blown up too." Look at what Kim Jong Un has seen. He saw Iran try to develop its nuclear weapons, and what did they do? They got rewarded by the United yes. States of America. President President Obama gave him 150 billion dollars and gave him a pathway. Which yep. is People exactly why I hate the Iran deal, and that's why you cannot. Yeah. Every country is not designed to do a deal with, right? And we have to no. really stop kidding ourselves. The diplomacy uh, of any sort is viable. With mm -hmm. someone like Iran, I don't think a deal can be done, and I think the same is true with North Korea. I will yeah. say I'm very thankful that we do have an anti-ballistic missile defense system mm -hmm. here in this country. Yeah. We have that in South Korea. They're already looking at it today. Um, that's something that plenty of people on the left didn't want the United States to have. It's not the solution to this, but I'm glad we have a defense. I, I agree. I'm glad that we have a defense as well. I just think that this is such a complicated issue. And when you start talking about things like completely stopping with trade with China, I mean, that's, that would be a huge, huge deal. Absolutely. I think it's all a huge deal, though, right? Of course it is. And it does rest with China. The major yeah. trade that goes on in North Korea is over the border with China. That's right. where the, the black market is. That's where the trade's going on. For far too long, as President Trump pointed out, we have actually funded the North Koreans in order to develop right. this. Yep. It was fundamentally wrong. I don't believe Kim Jong cares a hill of beans about yeah. any of his people. Oh, I don't no, think he's not. motivated by sanctions, but I do think it does get the attention of the Chinese. And if there's somebody that can be the uh, pivotal person to actually you know, well, push the envelope there, I do think it, it is the Chinese. In all respect, Congressman, the last time he acted up, 
the Chinese said that they were going to suspend coal imports from North Korea to China. Yeah, and that wasn't enough. Yeah. He's continuing to continue. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing an escalation, not a de-escalation. I'm not sure that China is equipped to handle this. I think that they have lost control. I would love to believe that you're right, that they do have control over this guy, that he's just a puppet. I don't think that that's the case anymore. And maybe that's why they're starting to ramp up their rhetoric publicly, because behind the scenes, they're not able to exert the control that they used to be able to. And I will say this, even if Kim Jong-un doesn't plan to do anything and we don't know, I think he loves the spotlight. So yeah. this element of us talking about it, people feel threatened. I think he's thriving on this. I don't know what he will do, but I think, I think we should pay attention to it. But I think he's sitting back watching TV and loving all of the coverage and that he's being feared. I think both are, both are at play, absolutely, because they could absolutely be doing all this development and we'd be none the wiser. I don't think it's an accident that everything is talked about, promoted. I think they're even rallying a celebration, a parade of sorts. <laughs> celebrate just how far they've come in this process. I think that is all very much a part of it and part of the luster, I agree. At the same time, it doesn't mean it's not the case and that they aren't where they are in the development of this thing. And, and I think it has to be, of course, taken seriously. I would hope that the Democrats have been pretty silent on this, would actually join and support the President of the United States to let the U.S. women, men and women who serve on our military know that we are united behind uh, this president and what he's going to have to do as a steady hand in taking care of North. Don't hold your breath. We'll see. Never a good idea to hold your breath for too long.